pansies, pansies, how I love you, pansies. Jaunty faced, laughing lipped and dewy eyed with glee. What my song might blossom out in little five leaved stanzas, as delicate in fancies as your beauty is to me. But my eyes shall smile on you, and my hands enfold you, pet, caress, and lift you to the lips that love you so, that shut ever in the years that may mildew or mold you. My fancy shall behold you, fair as in the long ago. To the dandelion. Dear common flower that grows beside the way, fringing the dusty road with harmless gold, first pledge of blithesome May, which children pluck and full of pride uphold, high hearted buccaneers o'erjoyed that they an Eldorado in the grass have found, which not the rich earth's ample round they match in wealth. Thou art more dear to me than all the prouder summer blooms may be. Gold such as thine ne'er drew the Spanish prow through the primeval hush of Indian seas, nor wrinkled the lean brow of age to rob the lover's heart of ease. Tis the spring's largesse which she scatters now to rich and poor alike with lavish hand, though most hearts never understand to take it at God's value but pass by the offered wealth with unrewarded eye. Thou art my tropics and mine Italy, to look at thee unlocks a warmer clime, the eyes thou givest me are in the heart, and heed not space or time, not in mid-June, the golden cuirass bee feels a more summer-like warm ravishment, in the white lily's breezy tent, his conquered Cerebus than I, when first, from the dark green thy yellow circles burst, then think I of deep shadows on the grass, of meadows where in sun the cattle graze, where, as the breezes pass, the gleaming rushes lean a thousand ways, of leaves that slumber in a cloudy mass, or whiten in the wind, of waters blue that from the distance sparkle through some woodland gap, and of a sky above, where one white cloud like a stray lamb doth move. My childhood's earliest thoughts are linked with thee. The sight of thee calls back the robin's song, who from the dark old tree beside the door sang clearly all day long. And I, secure in childish piety, listened as if I had heard an angel sing with news from heaven which he did bring fresh every day to my untainted ears when birds and flowers and I were happy peers. How like a prodigal doth nature seem, when thou for all thy gold so common art, thou teachest me to deem all sacredly of every human heart, since each reflects in joy its scanty gleam of heaven, and could some wondrous secret show, did we but pay the love we owe, and with a child's undoubting wisdom look on all these living pages, of God's book. The Rodara In May, when sea winds pierced our solitudes, I found the fresh Rodara in the woods, spreading its leafless blooms in a damp nook, to please the desert and the sluggish brook. The purple petals fallen in the pool made the black waters with their beauty gay. Here might the red bird come his plumes to cool, and court the flower that cheapens his array. Rodora, if the sages ask thee why this charm is wasted on the Martian sky, dear, tell them that if eyes were made for seeing, then beauty is its own excuse for being. Why thou wert there, O rival of the rose, I never thought to ask, I never knew, but in my simple ignorance suppose the same self-power that brought me there brought you. Early June, from Thyrsus. So, some tempestuous morn in early June, when the year's primal burst of bloom is o'er, before the roses in the longest day, when garden walks and all the grassy floor with blossoms red and white of fallen May, and chestnut flowers are strewn, 
So have I heard the cuckoo's parting cry From the wet field, through the vexed garden trees Come with the volleying rain and tossing breeze The blue is gone, and with the blue go I Too quick despair, wherefore wilt thou go? Soon will the high midsummer pomps come on Soon will the musk carnations break and swell. Soon shall we have gold-dusted snapdragon, sweet William with his homely cottage smell, and stalks in fragrant blow. Roses that down the alleys shine afar, and open jasmine-muffled lattices, and groups under the dreaming garden trees, and the full moon and the white evening star. To violets, welcome maids of honor. You do bring in the spring and wait upon her. She has virgins many, fresh and fair, yet you are more sweet than any. Ye are the maiden posies, and so graced to be placed for damask roses. Yet though thus respected, by and by ye do lie, Poor girls neglected. To a mountain daisy, on turning one down with the plow in April, 1786. Wee modest crimson tippet flower, those mit me in an evil hour, for I'm on crush among the stour thy slender stem. Despair thee now is past my power, thou bonny gem. Alas! It's no thy neighbour sweet, the bonny lark companion mate, bending thee among the dewy wheat, with speckled breast, when upward spring, light green the purple east. Cowl blew the bitter biting north upon thy early humble birth, yet cheerfully thou glinted forth amid the storm, scarce reared above the parent earth by tender form. The flaunting flowers our gardens yield, high sheltering woods and bars more than shield, that thou beneath the random beard or clod or stain, adorns the hasty stubble field, unseen, alone. There, in thy scanty mantle clad, thy snowy bosom somewhat spread, thou lifts thy unassuming head in humble guise, but now the share up tears thy bed, and lo, thou lies. Such is the fate of artless maid, sweet floweret of the rural shade, by love's simplicity betrayed, and guileless trust, till she, like thee, all soiled is laid low with the dust. Such is the fate of simple Bart, on life's rough ocean luckless start, and skilful he to note the card of prudent lore. To billows rage and gales blow hard and whelm him more. Such fate to suffering worth is given, who long with the wants and woes is driven, by human pride or cunning driven to misery's brink, till, wrenched of every stay but heaven, he, ruined, sink. Even thou who mourns the days of fate, that fate is thine, no distant date. Stern ruins plowshed drives, elate, full on thy bloom, till crushed beneath the furrow's weight shall be thy doom. The Mariposa Lily Insect or blossom, fragile fairy thing poised upon slender tip and quivering to flight, a flower of the fields of air, a jeweled moth, a butterfly, with rare and tender tints upon his downy wing, a moment resting in our happy sight, a flower held captive by a thread so slight its petal wings of broidered gossamer are, light as the wind, with every wind astir, wafting sweet odor, faint and exquisite. O oh, dainty nursling of the field and sky, what fairer thing looks up to heaven's blue and drinks the noontide sun, the dawning's dew? Thou winged bloom! Thou blossom butterfly. The water lily. Whence so fragrant form of light? 
hast thou drifted through the night, swan-like, to a leafy nest on the restless waves at rest? Art thou from a snowy zone, of a mountain summit blown, or the blossom of a dream fashioned in the foamy stream? Nay, methinks the maiden moon, when the daylight came too soon, fleeting from her bath to hide, left her garment in the tide. Copa de Oro, California Poppy. Thy satin vesture richer is than looms of Orient weave for raiment of her kings. Not dyes of olden tire, not precious things regathered from the long forgotten tombs of buried empires, not the iris plumes that wave upon the tropics' myriad wings, not all proud Sheba's queenly offerings could match the golden marvel of thy blooms. For thou art nurtured from the treasure veins of this fair land, thy golden rootlets sup her sands of gold, of gold thy petals spun, her golden glory thou, on hills and plains, lifting, exultant every kingly cup, brimmed with a golden vintage of the sun. The Moss Rose The angel of the flowers one day Beneath a rose tree sleeping lay That spirit to whose charge tis given To bathe young buds in dews of heaven Awaking from his light repose The angel whispered to the rose O fondest object of my care Still fairest found where all are fair For the sweet shade thou givest to me ask what thou wilt, tis granted thee. Then, said the rose with deepened glow, On me another grace bestow. The spirit paused in silent thought, What grace was there that flower had not? Twas but a moment, over the rose A veil of moss the angel throws, And, robed in nature's simplest weed, Could there a flower that rose exceed? To the fringed gentian, thou blossom bright with autumn dew and colored with the heaven's own blue, that openest when the quiet light succeeds the keen and frosty night. Thou comest not when violets lean o'er wandering brooks and springs unseen, or columbines in purple dressed nod o'er the ground bird's hidden nest. Thou waitest late and comest alone. When woods are bare and birds are flown, And frosts and shortening days portend The aged year is near his end. Then doth thy sweet and quiet eye Look through its fringes to the sky, Blue, blue, as if that sky let fall A flower from its cerulean wall. I would that thus, when I shall see The hour of death draw near to me, Hope, blossoming within my heart, may look to heaven as I depart. Flowers I will not have the mad Clytie, whose head is turned by the sun. The tulip is a courtly queen, whom therefore I will shun. The cowslip is a country wench, the violet is a nun. But I will woo the dainty rose, the queen of everyone. The pea is but a wanton witch, in too much haste to wed, And clasps her rings on every hand, the wolf's bane I should dread. Nor will I dreary a rosemary, that always mourns the dead, But I will woo the dainty rose, with her cheeks of tender red. The lily is all in white, like a saint, and so is no mate for me, and the daisy's cheek is tipped with a blush, she is of such low degree. Jasmine is sweet and has many loves, and the broom's betrothed to the bee. But I will plight with the dainty rose, the fairest of all is she. The sea poppy. A poppy grows upon the shore, bursts her twin cup in summer late, 
Her leaves of glaucous green and hoar, Her petals yellow, delicate. Oft to her cousins turns her thought, In wonder if they care that she Is fed with spray for dew and caught By every gale that sweeps the sea. She has no lovers like the red That dances with the noble corn, Her blossoms on the waves are shed, Where she sits shivering and forlorn. Goldenrod, when the wayside tangles blaze in the low September sun, when the flowers of summer days droop and wither one by one, reaching up through bush and briar, sumptuous brow and heart of fire, flaunting high its wind-rocked plume, brave with wealth of native bloom, goldenrod. When the meadow, lately shorn, parched, and languid, swoons with pain, when her lifeblood, night and morn, shrinks in every throbbing vein, round her fallen, tarnished urn, leaping watchfires brighter burn, royal arch o'er autumn's gate, bending low with lustrous weight, goldenrod. In the pasture's rude embrace, all o'errun with tangled vines, where the thistle claims its place and the straggling hedge confines, bearing still the sweet impress of unfettered loveliness, in the field and by the wall, binding, clasping, crowning all, goldenrod. Nature lies disheveled, pale, with her feverish lips apart, day by day the pulses fail, nearer to her bounding heart. Yet that slackened grasp doth hold store of pure and genuine gold. Quick thou comest, strong and free, type of all the wealth to be, goldenrod. Go, lovely rose, tell her that wastes her time and me, that now she knows when I resemble her to thee, how sweet and fair she seems to be. Tell her that's young and shuns to have her graces spied, that hadst thou sprung in deserts where no men abide, thou must have uncommended died. Small is the worth of beauty from the light retired. Bid her come forth, suffer herself to be desired, and not blush so to be admired. Then die, that she, the common fate of all things rare, may read in thee how small a part of time they share that are so wondrous, sweet, and fair. Fair daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon. As yet the early rising sun has not attained his noon. Stay, stay, until the hasting day has run but to the even song. And having prayed together, we will go with you along. We have short time to stay as you. We have as short a spring as quick a growth to meet decay as you are anything. We die as your hours do, and dry away like to the summer's rain, or as the pearls of morning's dew, ne'er to be found again. I sent my love two roses, one as white as driven snow, and one a blushing royal red, a flaming Jacquimino. I meant to touch and test my fate, that night I should divine, the moment I should see my love, if her true heart were mine. For if she holds me dear, I said, she'll wear my blushing rose, if not, she'll wear my coal Lamarck, as white as winter's snows. My heart sank when I met her, sure I had been overbold. For on her breast my pale rose lay, In virgin whiteness cold. Yet with low words she greeted me, With smiles divinely tender. Upon her cheek the red rose dawned, The white rose meant surrender. The Ivy Green Oh, a dainty plant is the ivy green, That creepeth o'er ruins old. Of right choice food are his meals, I ween, in his cell so lone and cold. The walls must be crumbled, the stones decayed, to pleasure his dainty whim, and the mouldering dust that years have made is a merry meal for him. 
Creeping where no life is seen, A rare old plant is the ivy green. Fast he stealeth on, though he wears no wings, And a staunch old heart has he. How closely he twineth, how tight he clings To his friend the huge oak tree. And slyly he traileth along the ground, And his leaves he gently waves, And he joyously twines and hugs around The rich mold of dead man's graves. Creeping where grim death has been, A rare old plant is the ivy green. Whole ages have fled, and their works decayed, And nations have scattered been, But the stout old ivy shall never fade From its hale and hearty green. The brave old plant in its lonely days Shall fatten upon the past, Creeping on where time has been, A rare old plant is the ivy green. Daisy this little daisy we all love because it seems to say, I'm come to tell good girls and boys that winter's gone away. Snowdrop, there is another flower too i dearly love to see, a little snowdrop peeping through the frozen ground at me. Primrose, this is a pretty primrose, in shady lanes it grows, and early in the pleasant spring in gardens too it blows. Daffodil, here is a formal daffodil, though common yet a favorite still. It seems such joyous news to bring as harbinger of pleasant spring. May Blossom. Oh, beauteous little May Blossom, I am rejoiced that you are come to smile upon us once again after the winter's snow and rain. Violet, how I do love the violet. Of all the flowers, it's my pet. How snug it hides its little head in the green leaves of its low bed. Lily of the Valley, lowly lily of the vale, to me you tell a useful tale. You say be pretty as you will, yet modesty is better still. Forget me not, forget me not, no, lovely flower, I think on thee for many an hour. If I could paint, I'd copy thee, then thou wouldst long remembered be. Tulip, the tulip with its varied hues of crimson brown and rich dark blue, Though senseless splendid you appear When thickly set in rich parterre. Rose, I cannot wonder that the rose Is such a favorite flower, How beautiful and sweet it is With jessamine in the bower. Sunflower, I don't admire the sunflower, It rears its head so high, And looks so proud and seems to say, I'm climbing to the sky. Field flowers, but oh, the fields, they are so sweet, the gardens are so gay, that I should like to run about and nosegays make all day. Myrtles and geraniums, the myrtles and geraniums seem mostly to abound, and these in the warm summer months are planted in the ground. Camellia japonica, here are the rich camellias, ah, tis a splendid sight, some variegated with soft tints, some crimson and some white. Passion flower, how gracefully the passion flower along the trellis twining shows symmetry with colors fair so pleasingly combining. Oranges, the oranges and lemons too, all in their proper station, though robbed of half their native charms, invite our admiration. But tell me now, who made these flowers? Who molded them so fair? Who taught them with such rich perfume to scent the morning air? Who filled their cups with drops of dew when parched with summer's rays? Who tinged their leaves with brightest hue on which we wondering gaze? Can man such splendid dyes produce? Can he such colors blend? Can he the tendril, graceful twine, or the soft branches bend? Oh no, tis God who reigns on high, who formed the earth and heaven, who framed each star that lights the sky. He hath to mortals given all these and more, and should not we frail children of mortality with thankful hearts each day, each night, think of his goodness infinite, and pray that gratitude may still our stubborn hearts with rapture fill? Oh, teach us humbly to adore thee first, thee last, thee evermore. The cool silence of the shaded hours, the scent and color of the jungle flowers, 
Thou art one of the jungle flowers, strange and fierce and fair, palest amber, perfect lines, and scented with champa flower. Lie back and frame thy face in the gloom of thy loosened hair. Sweet thou art and loved, I loved for an hour. But a thought flies far, ah, far to another breast, whose whiteness breaks to the rose of a twin peak flower. Where wind the azure veins that my lips caressed when fate was gentle to me for a too brief hour? There is my spirit's home and my soul's abode. The rest are only inns on the traveler's road. One night in May in a clear sky, the moon was a daisy flower. And I put it in my coat, a bouquet of love. Now I shall wear it. When I go along the city streets, the people will say as I pass by, he has a sweet soul. They will not see my flower and cannot know whence comes the fragrance of my spirit. This is the treacherous month when autumn days, with summer's voice come bearing summer's gifts. Beguiled, the pale downtrodden aster lifts, her head and blooms again. The soft warm haze makes moist once more the sere and dusty ways, and creeping through where dead leaves lie in drifts, the violet returns, snow noiseless sifts. Ere night an icy shroud, which morning's rays will idly shine upon and slowly melt, too late to bid the violet live again. The treachery at last too late is plain. Bare are the places where the sweet flowers dwelt. What joy sufficient hath November felt? What profit from the violet's days of pain? Ah, sunflower, weary of time, who countest the steps of the sun, seeking after that sweet golden clime where the traveler's journey is done, where the youth pined away with desire, and the pale virgin shrouded in snow arise from their graves and aspire where my sunflower wishes to go. There is a reaper whose name is Death, and with his sickle keen, he reaps the bearded grain at a breath, and the flowers that grow between. Shall I have not that is fair, saith he, have not but the bearded grain? Though the breath of these flowers is sweet to me, I will give them all back again. He gazed at the flowers with tearful eyes, and kissed their drooping leaves. It was for the Lord of Paradise he bound them in his sheaves. My Lord has need of these flowers gay, the reaper said and smiled. Dear tokens of the earth are they, where he was once a child. They shall all bloom in fields of light, transplanted by my care. And saints upon their garments white, these sacred blossoms wear. And the mother gave in tears and pain. The flowers she most did love. She knew she should find them all again in the fields of light above. Oh, not in cruelty, not in wrath, the reaper came that day. Twas an angel visited the green earth and took the flowers away. Oh, wayward rose, why dost thou wreathe so high, wasting thyself in sweet breathed ecstasy? The pulses of the wind my life uplift, And through my sprays I feel the sunlight sift, And all my fibres in a quick consent Entwined, aspire to fill their heavenward bent. I feel the shaking of the far-off sea, And all things growing blend their life with me. When men and women on me look, There glows within my veins a life not of the rose. Then let me grow until I touch the sky, and let me grow and grow until I die. So every year the sweet rose shooteth higher, and scales the roof upon its wings of fire, and pricks the air in lovely discontent with thorns that question still of its intent. But when it reached the roof tree, there it clung, nor ever farther up its blossoms flung. O oh, wayward rose, why hast thou ceased to climb? Hast thou forgot the ardour of thy prime? O oh, hearken, thus the rose spray listening, 
With what weird music sweet these full hearts ring. What many ripples of deep eddying sound rise, touch the roof tree old and drift around, bearing aloft the burden musical of joys and griefs from human hearts that fall. Green stem and fair, flushed circle I will lay along the roof and listen here alway. For rose and tree and every leafy growth That toward the sky unfolds with spiry bloth, No purpose hath save this, To breathe a grace o'er men, And in men's hearts to seek a place. Therefore, O poet, thou who gavest to me The homage of thy humble sympathy, No longer vest thy verse in rose leaves frail, let the heart's voice loud through thy paean wail. Lo, at my feet the wind of autumn throws A hundred turbulent blossoms of the rose, Full of the voices of the sea and grove and air, And full of hidden murmured love, And warm with passion through the roof tree scent, Dew drenched with tears all in one wild gush spent. O garden by the city gate, where seeds of flowers are sown, what seed is this they bring in state with grief and sob and moan? They hide it in the silent ground and sadly turn away. The dark earth closes it around beneath the closing day. And there its patient rest it takes with folded life and power, Till when the third bright morning breaks, behold, it bursts to flower. And ever since the new-made sun turned even slopes to green, Of all earth's gardens, not in one so fair a flower was seen. It glows with faith and charity, with love for man and God, in it a hope which cannot die springs from the bursting clod. A rose whose heart is mystic love, whose fragrance fills the earth, while happy heaven which bends above sings at the blessed birth. O risen Christ, O Easter flower, how dear thy grace has grown. From east to west with loving power, make all the world thine own and make our hearts thy gardens. Bloom in them, dear Lord, and be their life of life till life gives room to immortality. My heart is a garden, tired with autumn, heaped with bending asters and dahlias heavy and dark. In the hazy sunshine, the garden remembers April, the drench of rains and a snowdrop quick and clear as a spark. Daffodils blowing in the cold wind of morning And golden tulips, goblets holding the rain The garden will be hushed with snow Forgotten soon, forgotten After the stillness, will spring come again? I wandered lonely as a cloud That floats on high o'er vales and hills When all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils Beside the lake, beneath the trees Fluttering and dancing in the breeze Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way They stretched in never-ending line Along the margin of a bay Ten thousand saw I at a glance Tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. The Use of Flowers God might have bade the earth bring forth 
enough for great and small, the oak tree and the cedar tree without a flower at all. We might have had enough, enough for every want of ours, for luxury, medicine and toil, and yet have had no flowers. Then wherefore, wherefore were they made, or dyed with rainbow light, or fashioned with supremest grace, upspringing day and night, springing in valleys green and low, and on the mountains high, and in the silent wilderness, where no man passes by. Our outward life requires them not, then wherefore had they birth? To minister delight to man? To beautify the earth? To comfort man, to whisper hope, whene'er his faith is dim, for whoso careth for the flowers will care much more for him. The life of flowers. When hath wind or rain borne hard upon weak plant that wanted me, and I, however they might bluster round, walked off? We're most ungrateful, for sweet scents are the swift vehicles of still sweeter thoughts. A nurse and pillow the dull memory that would let drop without them her best doors. They bring me tales of youth and tones of love, and tis and ever was my wish and way to let all flowers live freely and all die whene'er their genius bids their souls depart among their kindred in their native place. I never plucked the rose, the violet's head hath shaken with my breath upon its bank and not reproached me. The ever sacred cup of the pure lily hath between my hands felt safe, unsoiled, nor lost one grain of gold. The Early Primrose Mild offspring of a dark and sullen sire, Whose modest form, so delicately fine, Was nursed in whirling storms and cradled in the winds. Thee, when young spring first questioned winter's sway, And dared the sturdy blusterer to the fight, Thee on this bank he threw to mark his victory. In this low vale the promise of the year, serene, Thou openest to the nipping gale, unnoticed and alone, thy tender elegance. So virtue blooms, brought forth amid the storms of chill adversity. In some lone walk of life she rears her head, obscure and unobserved, while every bleaching breeze that on her blows chastens her spotless purity of breast, and hardens her to bear serene the ills of life. Drifting Flowers of the sea. Across the dunes in the waning light, the rising moon pours her amber rays through the slumberous air of the dim brown night. The pungent smell of the seaweed strays from vast and trackless spaces where wind and water meet. White flowers that rise from the sleepless deep come drifting to my feet. They flutter the shore in a drowsy tune and furl their bloom to the light-lorn sky. Allow a caress to the rising moon, then fall to slumber and fade and die. White flowers abloom on the vagrant deep like dreams of love rising out of sleep. You are the songs I dreamt but never sung. Pale hopes my thoughts alone have known. Vain words ne'er uttered, though on the tongue. That winds to the sibilant seas have blown. In you, I see the everlasting drift of years. That will endure all sorrows, smiles, and tears. For when the bell of time will ring the doom, to all the follies of the human race, you still will rise in fugitive bloom and garland the shores of ruined space. Parfum de Fleur O oh, frail and fragrant visions, sweet nomads of the air, that rise like the mist on the meadows and cling to my darksome hair. Are ye the souls of roses, of memories, bagram lays, 
sent to caress my senses, faint murmurs of bygone days. Dawn flowers to Maurice Maeterlinck. Weird phantoms rise and the dawn winds blow. In the land of shadows, the dawn flowers grow. The night worn moon yields her weary glow to the morn rays that over the dream waste flow. Oh, to know what the dawn wind murmurs in chapels of pines to the ashen moons, what the forest well whispers to dale and dell with her singular reticent runes, to know the plaint of each falling leaf as it whirls across the autumnal plain, to know the dreams of the desolate shore as sails like ghosts pass o'er the dawnlit main, to know, oh, to know, why all life's strains have the same refrain as of rain beating sadly against the window pane. We do not know, and we cannot know, and all that is left for us here below, since songs and singers are out of date, and the muses have met with a similar fate, is to flee to the land of shadows and dreams, where the dawn flowers grow and the dawn winds blow, as morn rays over life's dream waste flow, to drown the moon in their ambient glow. Envoy, O oh, great dawn poet of Flanders, though in this life we ne'er may meet, I'll linger where thy dream maids wander to strew these dawn flowers at their feet. Jake. Who do you think stands watching the snow tops shining rosy in heaven now that the darkness takes all but the tallest posy? Who then sees the two-winged boat down there, all alone and asleep on the snow's last shadow, like a moth on a stone? The olive leaves, light as gadflies, have all gone dark, gone black. And now in the dark my soul to you turns back, to you, my little darling, to you out of Italy. For what is loveliness, my love, save you have it with me? So there's an oxen wagon come darkly into sight, a man with a lantern swinging a little light. What does he see, my darling, here by the darkened lake, here in the sloping shadow the mountains make? He says not a word, but passes, staring at what he sees. What ghost of us both do you think he saw under the olive trees? All the things that are lovely, the things you never knew. I wanted to gather them one by one and bring them to you. But never now, my darling, can I gather the mountain tips from the twilight like half-shut lilies to hold to your lips. And never the two-winged vessel that sleeps below on the lake can I catch like a moth between my hands for you to take. But hush, I am not regretting it is far more perfect now. I'll whisper the ghostly truth to the world and tell them how I know you are here in the darkness, how you sit in the throne of my eyes at peace and look out of the windows in glad surprise. And only where the forest fires have sped, scorching relentlessly the cool north lands, a sweet wild flower lifts its purple head and like some gentle spirit, sorrow fed. It hides the scars with almost human hands. And only to the heart that knows of grief, of desolating fire, of human pain, there comes some purifying sweet belief, some fellow feeling beautiful, if brief. And life revives and blossoms once again. The laggard winter ebbed so slow with freezing rain and melting snow, it seemed as if the earth would stay forever where the tide was low in sodden green and watery gray. But now from depths beyond our sight the tide is turning in the night and floods of color long concealed come silent rising toward the light through garden bare and empty field. 
And first along the sheltered nooks, the crocus runs in little brooks of joyance till the light made bold. They show the gladness of their looks in shining pools of white and gold. The tiny scilla sapphire blue is gently sweeping in to strew the earth with heaven and sudden rills of sunlit yellow sweeping through spread into lakes of daffodils. The hyacinths with fragrant heads have overflowed their sandy beds and fill the earth with faint perfume the breath that spring around her sheds and now the tulips break and bloom. A sea, a rainbow-tinted sea, a splendor and a mystery, floods o'er the fields of faded gray. The roads are full of folks in glee, for lo, today is Easter Day. Dear land of flowers, forgive me that I took these snatches from thy glittering wealth of song and twisted to the uses of a book strains that to alien harps can ne'er belong. Thy gems shine pure in their native bed concealed, beyond the pry of vulgar eyes. And there, through labyrinths of language led, the patient student grasps the glowing prize. Yet many, in their race toward other goals, may joy to feel, albeit at second hand, some far faint heartthrob of poetic souls whose breath makes incense in the flowery land. On many an idle day have I grieved over lost time, but it has never lost, my lord. Thou hast taken every moment of my life in thine own hands. Hidden in the heart of things, thou art nourishing seeds into sprouts, buds into blossoms, and ripening flowers into fruitfulness. I was tired and sleeping on my idle bed, and imagined all work had ceased. In the morning I woke up and found my garden full with wonders of flowers. The Death of the Flowers The melancholy days are come, the saddest of the year, of wailing winds and naked woods and meadows brown and sere. Heaped in the hollows of the grove, the autumn leaves lie dead. They rustle to the eddying gust and to the rabbit's tread. The robin and the wren are flown and from the shrubs the jay, and from the woodtop calls the crow through all the gloomy day. Where are the flowers, the fair young flowers, that lately sprang and stood in brighter light and softer airs, a beauteous sisterhood? Alas, they all are in their graves, the gentle race of flowers are lying in their lowly beds with the fair and good of ours. The rain is falling where they lie, but the cold November rain calls not from out the gloomy earth the lovely ones again. The windflower and the violet, they perished long ago. The briar rose and the orchis died amid the summer glow. But on the hill the golden rod, and the aster in the wood, and the yellow sunflower by the brook in autumn beauty stood, till fell the frost from the clear cold heaven, as falls the plague on men, and the brightness of their smile was gone from upland, glade, and glen. And now, when comes a calm mild day, as still such days will come to call the squirrel and the bee from out their winter home. When the sound of dropping nuts is heard, though all the trees are still, and twinkle in the smoky light the waters of the rill, the south wind searches for the flowers whose fragrance late he bore, and sighs to find them in the wood and by the stream no more. And then I think of one who in her youthful beauty died, the fair meek blossom that grew up and faded by my side. In the cold moist earth we laid her, when the forests cast the leaf, and we wept that one so lovely should have a life so brief. Yet not unmeet it was 
that one, like that young friend of ours, so gentle and so beautiful, should perish with the flowers. I see his blood upon the rose, and in the stars the glory of his eyes. His body gleams amid the eternal snows, his tears fall from the skies. I see his face in every flower, the thunder and the singing of the birds are but his voice, and carven by his power, rocks are his written words. All pathways by his feet are worn, his strong heart stirs the ever-beating sea, his crown of thorns is twined with every thorn, his cross is every tree. A Sheaf of Roses The rose was born of lover's sighs, of lover's tears and sobs, and deep within its glowing heart, the heart of true love throbs. Each rose that blooms, an emblem is, of love divine and true. And I have made a sheaf of them to send with love to you. A bunch of roses. Better than gifts of gleaming gold or houses made by hands. More precious than the glowing gems men seek in distant lands. Breathing of love and purity, of constant hearts and true. A bunch of roses, God's own gift, all wet with heaven's dew. White Cherokee, an angel on her way to heaven. One perfumed starlit night, remembered one she'd left behind, and pausing in her flight, looked back to earth and shed a tear, for love left all forlorn. Behold, where fell that pearly drop, a pure white rose was born. Cecil Bruner Two men there were in olden days who loved each other well. To each man was the same fair maid, dearer than words could tell. One kissed her hand and rode away, his heart with sorrow fraught. Around that cottage threshold grew the rose called Friendly Thought. Frau Karl Drust A mother heard the war god call her well-loved firstborn's name. With lips that smiled, but heart that bled, she heard his dream of fame. She pinned the colors on his breast and watched him march away. The rose they call the mother's prayer blossomed that fateful day. White Banksia. One journeyed to a foreign land to teach the love of God. The thorns of ignorance and strife beset the path he trod. His prayer for faith and strength went up to him who hears all woes. An answering sign to him was sent the sweet white Banksia rose. Rose of Old Castile A proud Castilian beauty left her home in sunny Spain and went with him who held her heart a fairer home to gain. To strange new lands the good ship sailed and where she touched her keel there grew in token of young love the rose of old Castile. Safrano, a Spanish maid of high degree, lived in her patio. Suitors she had, but none could touch the maid's pure heart of snow. There came a gallant from the wars who'd vanquished all his foes. He won her heart, and from her blush grew the Safrano rose. Pink Cherokee, a tender yearning mother soul whose life had never known the blessing of a baby's heart beating against her own, found Rosie smiling at her door, a babe of mystery. 
there bloom the rose of mother love, the rare pink Cherokee. Jacques Minot, a boy and girl from infancy, playmates, good comrades too, walked hand in hand one summer day, a rare old garden through. A meadowlark full-throated sang his love song to the morn. The crimson Jacques Minot grew there, for there new love was born. Gold of Ophir A dark-eyed Indian princess was wooed, so legends say, by a brave and gallant soldier who loved and rode away. Under the shadow of the hills, capped by eternal snows, she sleeps and wrapped and sheltered by the gold of Ophir rose. Ragged Robin A dusky baby came to share a gypsy's caravan. The dark-eyed mother loved the child as only mothers can. She laid him amongst the grasses where the south wind softly blows. Love's angel sent to mark the spot the ragged robin rose. Killarney A bonny Irish lassie followed her sweetheart true to distant shores where homesick tears bedimmed her eyes of blue. The little people heard her plaint and pitying her woes. They planted as a sweet surprise the pink Killarney rose. Marie von Hauta Upon a cactus-covered hill facing the ocean blue, a shining cross was raised aloft by one whose heart was true. The seeds of faith he scattered where the western sunset glows, took root and grew and blossomed in the crucifixion rose. American Beauty Where great ambitions swirl around a teeming toiling mart, a gray-haired gardener worked and hoped love's fair dream in his heart. The vision bright he cherished till, with velvet leaves uncurled, a perfect rose rewarded him, love's gift to all the world. The Rainbow Rose The rainbow on a summer day glowing against the sky was filled with pity as it heard a hapless lover's sigh. A shower of sympathy it sent to compass him around. Where fell those drops of kindly balm, the rainbow rose was found. Sweet Briar Rose Some love the spot where lilies fling their subtly sweet perfume. Some love the languorous lotus with its oriental bloom. But drifting downward through the years, my loyal memory goes to where my childhood's treasure lives, the wild sweet briar rose. A September Violet For days the peaks wore hoods of cloud, the slopes were veiled in chilly rain. We said, it is the summer's shroud, and with the brooks we moaned aloud, will sunshine never come again? At last the west wind brought us one serene, warm, cloudless crystal day, as though September, having blown a blast of tempest, now had thrown a gauntlet to the favored May. Backward to spring our fancies flew, and careless of the course of time the bloomy days began anew then as a happy dream comes true or as a poet finds his rhyme half wondered at half unbelieved i found thee friendliest of the flowers then summer's joys came back green leaved and its doomed dead a while reprieved first learned how truly they were ours Dear Violet, did the autumn bring the vernal dreams till thou, like me, didst climb to thy imagining? Or was it that the thoughtful spring did come again in search of thee? 
the woods birch. The wind flapped loose, the wind was still, shaken out dead from tree and hill. I had walked on at the wind's will. I sat now, for the wind was still. Between my knees my forehead was, my lips drawn in said not alas, my hair was over in the grass, my naked ears heard the day pass. My eyes wide open had the run of some ten weeds to fix upon. Among those for you, out of the sun, the wood spurge flowered three cups in one. From perfect grief there need not be wisdom or even memory. One thing then learned remains to me. The wood spurge has a cup of three. Trailing Arbutus Darlings of the forest, blossoming alone when earth's grief is sorest, for her jewels gone, ere the last snowdrift melts, your tender buds have blown. Tinged with colour faintly, like the morning sky, or more pale and saintly, wrapped in leaves ye lie, even as children sleep in faith's simplicity. There the wild wood robin hymns your solitude, and the rain comes sobbing through the budding wood, while the low south wind sighs, but dare not be more rude. Were your pure lips fashioned out of air and dew, starlight unimpassioned, dawn's most tender you, and scented by the woods that gathered sweets for you? Fairest and most lonely from the world apart, made for beauty only, veiled from nature's heart, with such unconscious grace as makes the dream of art. Were not mortal sorrow an immortal shade, then would I tomorrow such a flower be made, and live in the dear woods where my lost childhood played. Daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I, at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. Hymn to the Flowers Day stars, that ope your frownless eyes to twinkle from rainbow galaxies of Earth's creation, and dewdrops on her lonely orchards sprinkle as a libation. Ye mountain worshippers, who bending lowly before the uprisen sun, God's lidless eye, throw from your chalices a sweet and holy incense on high. Ye bright mosaics, that with storied beauty the floor of nature's temple tessellate, what numerous emblems of instructive duty your forms create. Neath cloistered boughs, each floral bell that swingeth and tolls its perfume on the passing air, makes Sabbath in the fields and ever ringeth a call to prayer. Not to the domes where crumbling arch and column attest the feebleness of mortal hand, but to that fame, most Catholic and solemn, which God hath planned. To that cathedral, boundless as our wonder, whose quenchless lands the sun and moon supply. 
far the wings and waves, its organ thunder, its dome the sky. There, as in solitude and shade I wander, through the green aisles, or stretched upon the sod, awed by the silence, reverently ponder the ways of God. Your voiceless lips, O flowers, are living preachers, each cup a pulpit, every leaf a hook, supplying to my fancy numerous teachers from loneliest nook. Floral apostles, that in dewy splendor, weep without woe and blush without a crime. Oh, may I deeply learn and ne'er surrender your law sublime. Thou wert not, Solomon, in all thy glory arrayed, the lilies cry, in robes like ours. How vain your grandeur, oh, how transitory are human flowers. In the sweet-scented pictures, heavenly artist, with which thou paintest nature's widespread hall, what a delightful lesson thou imparted of love to all. Not useless are ye, flowers, though made for pleasure, blooming o'er field and wave by day and night. From every source your sanction bids me treasure harmless delight. Ephemeral sages, what instructors hoary for such a world of thought could furnish scope? Each fading calyx a memento glory, yet fount of hope. Posthumous glories, angel-like collection, upraised from seed or bulb interred in earth. Ye are to me a type of resurrection and second birth. Were I in churchless solitude remain, far from all voice of teachers and divines, my soul would find in flowers of God's ordaining, priests, sermons, shrines, flowers. Speak full well in language quaint and old, one who dwelleth by the castle rhyme. When he called the flowers so blue and golden, stars that in earth's firmament do shine. Stars they are, wherein we read our history, as astrologers and seers of eld. Yet not wrapped about with awful mystery, yet the burning stars which they beheld. Wondrous truths and manifold as wondrous, God hath written with those stars above. But not less in the bright flowerets under us stands the revelation of his love. Bright and glorious is that revelation writ all over this great world of ours, making evident our own creation in these stars of earth, these golden flowers. And the poet, faithful and far-seeing, sees alike in stars and flowers a part of the self-same universal being which is throbbing in his brain and heart. Gorgeous flowerets in the sunlight shining, blossoms flaunting in the eye of day, tremulous leaves with soft and silver lining, buds that open only to decay. Brilliant hopes, all woven in gorgeous tissues, flaunting gaily in the golden light, large desires with most uncertain issues, tender wishes blossoming at night. These and flowers and men are more than seeming. Workings are they of the self-same powers which the poet, in no idle dreaming, seeth in himself and in the flowers. Everywhere about us are they glowing. Some like stars tell us spring is born. Others, their blue eyes with tears o'erflowing, stand like a Ruth amid the golden corn. Not alone in spring's armorial bearing, and in summer's green emblazoned field, but in arms of brave old autumn's wearing in the centre of his brazen shield. Not alone in meadows and green alleys on the mountain top, and by the brink of sequestered pools and woodland valleys, where the slaves of nature stoop to drink. Not alone in her vast dome of glory, not on graves of bird and beast alone, but in old cathedrals, high and hoary, on the tombs of heroes, carved in stone. In the cottage of the rudest peasant, in ancestral homes whose crumbling towers, speaking of the past unto the present, tell us of the ancient games of flowers. 
In all places, then, and in all seasons, flowers expand their light and soul-like wings, teaching us, by most persuasive reasons, how akin they are to human beings. And with childlike, credulous affection, we behold their tender buds expand, emblems of our own great resurrection, emblems of the bright and better land. The Daisy from the legend of good women. Of all the flores in the mede, then love I most these flores white and rede, such that men call them daisies in our tune. To him I have so great affection, as I said erst, when common is the may, that in my bed there doeth me no day, that I numb up and walking in the mede, to see this floor against the sunnesprede when it uprises early by the morrow. That blissful sight softened all my sorrow, so glad am I, one that I have the presence of it, to done it all reverence. And ever I love it, and ever I like it newer, and ever shall, till that mine heart to die, all swear ye not, of this I will not lie. My busy ghost that thirsteth always newer to see this flow so young, so fresh of you, constrained me with so greedy desire that in my heart I feel yet the fire that made me rise ere it were day, and this was now the first morrow of May, with dreadful heart and glad devotion for to be at the resurrection of this flora, one that it should unclose Ayen the sunne, that rose as red as rose, and doone on me the non richt I me sette, and as I could, this fresh floor I grete, kneeling alway till it unclosed was, upon the small, soft, sweet the grass, that was with flores sweeter embrowded all, of such sweetness and such odour over all, that for to speak of gomme, erbe, or tree, comparison may not i market be. For it surmounteth plainly all odours, and of rich beauty of flores. And Zephyrus and Flora gently gave to these flores soft and tenderly his sword to breast, and made him for to spread as god and goddess of the flory made in which me thought I mich day by day dwellen alway the jolly month of May, withouten sleep, withouten meat or drink. A doon full softly I gan to sink, and leaning on my elbow and my side, the long day I showed me for to abide, for nothing else and I shall not lay, but for to look upon the daisy, that well by reason men it call May, the daisy, or else the eye of the day, the empress and flora of flores all, I pray to God that fair mot she fall, and all that love in flores for her sake. Two Blossoms Fair pledges of a fruitful tree, why do ye fall so fast? Your date is not so past, but you may stay yet here a while to blush and gently smile and go at last. What, were you born to be an hour or half's delight, and so to bid good night? Tis pity nature brought ye forth merely to show your worth and lose you quite. But you are lovely leaves where we may read how soon things have their end, though ne'er so brave, and after they have shown their pride, like you a while they glide into the grave. Weed or flower? By Helen Leon Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Caitlin Buckley. Tis but a common thing, one coldly said. Nay, call it not a flower, this little weed. If plucking it, I kill it, root and seed. Better the world were if it lay there dead. Ah, oh, rather let it live, a second cried. Weed it may be, and yet it has its use. Here in its healing essence is excuse for blooming lies, and here its only pride. Destroy it not, another pled, behold, this tapering leaf, this soft and tender green. Upon my canvas it shall bloom serene, this tiny chalice fleck of living gold. Then one bent over it, ah, flower it bright, 
For only flowers in this garden grow. His earth, his sunshine made thee, o'er thee blow his wind's frail thing. In thee he shows his might.